Uncommon Sense with Junior Doan, sharing the wisdom and insight of those who have been there and done that. Hello everyone and welcome back to Uncommon Sense, a chance to settle down and be a part of our real talk with real people about real life. With me today is Jean Anderson. I know Jean for quite a few years now and uh, in a different capacity actually. Um, some years ago um, in the early days of Matrix I asked him if he would be willing to bring his magic act to Matrix and he, in the end, ended up putting two different magic shows together for us with all the best entertainers at the time for Matrix in different, in different years. So with that kind of history, it, I can tell you what I admire about Gene. Gene has uh, an excitement to him, an energy about him, an optimism, and a willingness to really put himself, um, what do I want to say, an, opt uh, an ability to put himself where he needs to be to get the right things done at the right time. So, Jean, welcome to our show. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. And <coughs> as you know, what we, what we try and talk about here are not so much about when times are going good, but what happens as we all get when times hit us hard from the side and we, we're just a little stunned by life. And what do you tell yourself when something untoward happens? Well, uh, having looked at a lot of survivor personality kinds of things, I, I suppose this is what I do. What the best survivors do are three things. First, they assess what's going on here. And secondly, they say, what could I do? They believe they could do something to make this turn out better for mm -hmm. them. Right. And they're willing to do almost anything. So if you take that thing. But the first thing is, the best survivors don't spend much time getting upset. Now, you get thrown, of course, but right. upset doesn't do much energy towards anything that's constructive. So you do get thrown. The, the funny thing is, you know, we go to school, and in school you do the lesson, and then you take the test. Right. But life is different. First you take the test, and then you get, get the <laughs> lesson. Okay? Oh so, so the first it's time, old. yeah, so, so for the first time <coughs> you are going to get thrown because you weren't expecting that, and you're going to get thrown. So how do you come out of that and make right. it work for you? Basically, I think that's what I try to do at least. And are you not an emotional person? Yeah, I think I fair, well, I don't know. Uh, certainly With your scientific I, background, yeah, certainly you you're analytical. To, you, yeah, so you try to control that, but sure. Uh, and I like to get excited about stuff. And I even work hard at getting excited about stuff. Is that emotion? Uh, probably, I don't know. Do you think it's habit? Yeah, perhaps. I try to be happy. I try to do things that make me happy. Right? Now, and wh so what falls into that category? Well, uh, you know, oh, a lot of things. Uh, being with friends, eating good food, walking in nature, seeing a pretty bird. I mean, there's anything. Right. And you look for it and you say, oh, this is good. You know, like this spring, for example, I was out shooting wildflowers in my backyard, which I've never had the opportunity or the right time of day to do. So there I am every morning about 7.30 in the morning laying on my belly in the dirt shooting wildflowers. That was really fun. Yeah. That was really fun, but I mean, so a lot of things get me excited. I see. But um, do you think the, the what do I want to say? Do you draw from philosophy or experience from that? In other words, I, I, I hear two things. I hear partly you just have to do it, right? Or whatever it is you have to yeah. do, right? Yeah. And partly is it's like a determination to be the kind of person you are. Well, yeah, I suppose. And so you try to learn the best from those who have gone before you. So you read from others, and you say pick up this piece and that piece and. Then your dad told you something, and you get that piece, 
uh, well, for example, I'll tell a dad story. May I tell okay. a dad yeah, story? Yeah, A would. quick one. This is one of my earliest, uh, not earliest, but a very significant experience for me. I was uh, in college. I was student teaching, actually. My first degree was in education. Hmm. And I was student teaching, and my clunker, the last day when I was supposed to be out of the apartment and gone, m I, the transmission went out on my clunker car. And I used to operate on, you know, my money was, I had about $7 to my name. I remember that. And I was about 200 miles from home. And life was at its bleakest moment. Oh, uh. dear, whatever. So I called up my dad, and he listened to this whole tale of woe. And when I'd finished, he said, well, how is your health? <laughs> I was so mad. I mean, he didn't understand the gravity of the situation. Oh, yes, he did. And that's haunted me all these years since, because in the great scheme of things, it wasn't that big a deal, was it? You know, so how was your health? Now, that's pretty important. Transmission on car, not very important. All right, so we solved that problem and moved on, you know. But after that, then you look at other things and you kind of reflect on that and say, what's really going on here? And is this really worth getting upset over? Maybe not. <laughs> okay. I wish I had learned that lesson earlier. <laughs> me too. It's <laughs> taken me a lot of personal time and a lot of upset in my life about small things to realize that they're just going to happen. They happen. Right. Things happen. You just things have to deal with them. They're going to happen, and you know. And the, the shingles wear out on the house and the chimney plugs up. And there, I mean, there's things that happen and then you have to deal with it. Okay. It's a new thing. Every one of it is a new thing. Do you think that, that, that it was all possible that, um, well, let me ask a different question. Do you, if that was what you learned from your father, what other pieces of nuggets that you said that you, that form this sort of really strong basis of philosophy and sort of get it done? Did you see well, uh, well, by the way, there are, are there are three phases in life with respect to a man's father. I'll just tell you these. The first is, my dad can lick your dad. Right. The second is, ah, dad, you don't know anything. And the third is, my father used to say. Right. I'm in that third <laughs> stage now. Right, I'll just right. tell you this, you know. Right. Okay, so other things. Um, uh, I'll recount uh, uh, another experience I had that was uh, rather interesting. I was, I'm a magician, as you mentioned, and I was uh, at the British Ring Convention in Scarborough, England, the Scarborough of so you're going to Scarborough Fair yeah, off the song. Right. And uh, at the time, I was at the University of Oslo in Norway, and uh, I was coming there. Now, when they have these, these events, they have a Toastmaster, and I never understood really what a Toastmaster did. Mm -hmm. And I, I, this is my hypothesis, that it's a pre-microphone era thing, and their uh -huh. job is to repeat the toast. And the first toast is to the Queen. And the Toastmaster in his loud booming voice says, the Queen. And everybody drinks to the Queen. Then they do to the city and a response from the mayor of the city. And then to the organization and a response from the president of the organization. And then one to the visitors and ladies and a response from the visitors and ladies. And I was doing the response for the visitors and ladies. I had no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. All right, not All right. really. And you're supposed to be funny, but what was I going to say? Now, the night before this, I was uh, not. I was staying in some little hotel, the George Hotel, uh, which was not the convention headquarters. Uh, but we would be up until four in the morning doing card tricks and whatever magicians do when they go to magicians' convention. So I come back to my hotel, and I can't get the door open. And I ring the bell, and there's no response. And I kick on the door, and there's no response. Mm. So I go to the telephone booth, and you could get the operator directly. And I said, "I'm a stranger in a strange land, and I can't get in my hotel." Could you call him? Certainly, sir. She, ring, 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 nothing. Uh. So I say, would you call the police? Because I intend to kick the door down, <laughs> and I would like that they were there when, when I do it. So the policeman comes, and he says, what's the trouble, mate? And I said, I can't get in my hotel. He says, well, I'll handle that. He takes his crunch and wham, wham, <laughs> wham, wham on the door. <laughs> nothing. Uh. So he says, all I can suggest is that you come down and stay in a cell, <laughs> which is very kind, which they did, OK? So, and, and they didn't lock the door or anything, but I was in the women's wing and there was nobody else there. All right, so there I was. So, um, but I go down there at four in the morning and, and so I show, I figure it's boring in the police station at four in the morning, so I showed them some tricks and then I went to my cell and then there I was. It was very kind. 
It's the next night that I'm responding on a banquet. And I'm laying there in bed, and it's chilly in this cell, right. on this leatherette plastic thing that I'm laying on with a little dinky blanket. And I'm saying, it's an ill wind that blows nobody good, and the only one that can get good out of this is me. <laughs> How am I going to do it? So there I formulated my speech, which consisted, now how you're supposed to do this, you start with the biggest one, the Queen's not there, so you start with Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't do that. I said Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, and especially you, Mr. Mayor. Am I glad to be here tonight? <laughs> because last night I spent in the Scarborough Jail. Let me explain how this happened. I went through this little story, and so then I, uh, on joke telling, I said, so I showed them a card trick. You know, they took me down to the jail. I showed them a card trick. They put me in the cell, like it was right. cause effect, you know. Right. They put me in a cell, and they must have known I'd be responding on behalf of the visitors and ladies because it was in the women's wing. <laughs> but at least I had a private toilet, and that's better than the George Hotel, right. which was, and that went over, took it over the top. So I made the papers with open sesame, fails to open door, <laughs> and et cetera. So that's, I think, a, an example of taking a bad situation and making quite a bit out of it. Yes, you, you know? did. I did. So I pulled that one out, and so I suppose that would be serendipity, all right? And I don't know if you know the definition of serendipity or where the origins of that word. You know what that is word? The, uh, what is Seren I don't know the Serendipity? No, and nobody really knows the story. There, uh, serendipity was put in our language by Horace Walpole, a British author, uh, in 1754, but it's based on a Persian fairy tale about three princes, male king's sons, princes of Serendip, mythical kingdom, right. whose father, the king, thought they weren't growing up with proper standards somehow, and so he sent them out of the kingdom, and they had adventures. And these are things that could have gone either way. They could have turned out bad, or they could have turned out good. And they found out a way to make them turn out good. So in its truest definition, serendipity is an unexpected happening that you find a way to make turn out fortunate. Lovely. It's lovely, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And w there's part of that word that we've lost in our modern definition, which is sagacity. Choice. Uh, well, right. sagacity, the wisdom to even wisdom. know what you've got here. Okay. So, so that's it. How do you take a situation and make it turn out better for yourself or even fortunate for yourself, even though this not so good or indifferent thing happened? Could turn out bad, could turn out good. How do I make it turn out good for me? That's serendipity. So less, uh, less being involved with things happening to you and making things that occur be part of your ability to choose and effect a good solution. A, tr a try. A try. To try to but you make know it at least happy. This, this shows <laughs> the, the, the strength and the power of an individual. But it's every once in a while we meet people who are very um, trying or like want to counter us or who are mean-spirited. Yeah, I try to avoid those people. No. <laughs> 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 what, what if you have to deal with someone like well, that? Well, you do. And you do have to deal with people like that, especially in a business environment. There are, yeah. I don't know, there are jerks, you know? If not on your side of the ledger, on the other side, and these are sometimes called customers, you know, okay. or that you need as customers. And so you have to deal with some people that are, of course, and so guess and, what? And what, you have you, to what have you learned about dealing with <sighs> those kinds of situations or people? The people who <laughs> mean for things to be <coughs> acrimonious or um, well, unsuccessful. Well, I, I don't know if I got any great philosophy to impart there. I mean, we all figure out our best ways to deal with, with others, I guess, don't we? And some of them, you say, boy, I don't want to do that again. But, but usually you can make them turn out. If your heart is pure, you know, more or less, Usually you can get, I can get by with more things than I should get by with often. I because find. you're humorous. Uh, yes, and, and because I do not have an agenda, if you will. Mm -hmm. I'm, my, my intentions are noble almost always, and they know it. And so because I'm not coming in with something, you ain't going to see through me because there's nothing to see through. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm humorous. I guess. And so I can get by with things that I shouldn't really be able to get by with. 
So I push that because I know I can. Does being an extrovert make it easier? I, more well, I have a, I, I, with when you're with people anyway. When I'm with people, I move socially as an extrovert. I don't need, I, and I don't know that I'm an, I guess I'm an extrovert because I get my with battery, people. I get my battery charged on people. I absolutely do. But I don't need to be with people to be happy. It's mm -hmm. not necessary. But yeah, I suppose it does. I enjoy people. I enjoy lots of kinds of people. My best friends are quite different personality types from me. I almost seek that because it's more experience some or other. So my, uh, one of my best friends from Bay City, Bob Blanc, people wonder, and we go off to conventions together and room together, and they wonder, how are you even friends? And we're best friends, and we're so different, and I just, so I get along with a lot of, they don't have to be my type for me to get along with them at all. Mm -hmm. I like different ones. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm sort of, what did you mean by that you get something from being with people? They charge you up. Well, well how does that work? from extrovert and introvert. Uh, introverts, y you cannot necessarily know that a person is an introvert with how they deal with you socially. Mm -hmm. But it's draining to them. And they come home from a party and they're exhausted. Mm -hmm. I come home from uh, doing a, let's say, a magic show. And my battery is charged. Now, I might be physically tired, but I am charged up. Mm -hmm. So it's not emotionally draining to me. It's, it's generating to me if it's, if it's a good show. Do you show think it's, it's a biological fun. difference that it's some kind of, uh, like, uh, I don't say adrenaline or endorphins well, or whatever, whatever, whatever? Well, that, sure. Floods you in some other chemical floods an introvert? You know, it goes back to Young and Myers-Briggs type indicator right. and so on and, and on that from the Jungian things, Myers-Briggs brought in uh, that, well, not extrovert, introvert, because that was, that's from Jung, who thought, yeah, you've got, you're hardwired with what your preference is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you have to act like that, but any time you act out of your preference, it's emotionally draining. Hmm. So a great day is when you can be 51% of the time in your preferences. Mm -hmm. We're not always that lucky, you know. But, mm -hmm. sir, we all have to act both ways of whatever we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But when you can be where it is you wanted to be, ooh, that's good. That's good. What do you do to refresh yourself? Uh, you, usually you explain the schedule bef before we start. Well, I... Mean, it's really quite uh, busy. Well, I'm busy because I like to accomplish. Okay, mm. I like to accomplish things, so I'm very big on accomplishment. So I'm willing to pay quite a price for that in time, in, mm. in particular investment in time, in preparation, in doing all those things that are not necessarily what most people would consider great fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the end result of that is I will get to go and do a show for people, and then they all laugh and they go out of there, and they just had a good time, and therefore I had a good time, and that's the payback, I suppose or I go to a party or to dinner with friends or have friends for dinner or, but there's a payoff. So I guess in each facet of my life, and that includes gardening or photography or fishing or any of those things, um, what I need to do as a driver for my life is I want to be good at it, first of all. So I do those things that I'm good at or work at those things I want to be good at until I am good at them, but I need to do something that for the viewer is memorable. So if you see my magic show, it, you should go out of there and it should be memorable for you. If you come and look at my garden, it should be memorable for you. And if I achieve that, then that's where I'm going. If I show you a slideshow of my photography and you say, oh wow, that was memorable, then I did it. So it's not just for me. There has to be viewers to see it somehow or other. That interests me. But okay. Uh, but it interests me about it is that you almost put the viewer first. Oh yeah. It starts there. So when I'm, when I'm, sh photography for example, when I'm shooting I'm looking for doing good photos but somebody else has to see them. So it's not just me. Now how am I going to do that? So I got to arrange how that happens. Uh, when I'm doing the flower garden, I've got a big flower garden, not as big as yours, but 
pretty big <laughs> and too much work, and you say, what's that for? Well, I'm out there every day looking at it, so I'm enjoying it, but I like when others come also to see and say, how do you manage to do all this garden? When you lay pleasure. out a garden, or would you, do you say, what is it others would like, or do you say, yeah, well, this is what I would like, but will they like it if better if I did this? Well, it, you wished it could be that simple. No, you look for what will survive in zone five, which <laughs> is us, and you keep trying for perennials that'll make it, but then the woodchuck comes and eats those up, and then those winter kill, and those. So the great master plan that I had that within three years, I would have this into perennials that would make it every year. Ha, 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 ha. That started at this house 18 years ago, and it's not there yet. So some of these things don't work according to plan. It's, it's really interesting to me because I, like say in the garden, or don't do the work exactly like you're saying, but on the planning, I do it so it, it has some kind of visual and spiritual relevance to us, right? Okay. And it sort of surprises me sometimes when people come over and they say, oh, I just love your garden because I hadn't been thinking. Or you hadn't thought in terms of You know, of that. all okay. I want is when people come to our home or our, as soon right. as they step on the property, they should know there's a transition between that world and this and sort this of world. sanctuary yeah. of spiritual yeah. elevation. Yeah, and yeah, I dig that. Uh, I dig that. So I, I don't know that's what, I'm looking for color and long sustaining color. So I'm into flowers that bloom for a long time. That's, uh, you so know, these so are annuals or perennials? Both now. And so I start annuals in the house and so I got uh, end up having four banks of grow lights and uh, so I start almost all from seed myself. It's just part of it, because you can't buy the, most of what you want, um, I, what I want, I can't buy locally, or else, if it's perennials, they cost so much, hey, I can get seeds, I know how to plant seeds. Right. I like planting seeds, it's fun. To see things grow. Yeah, yeah, that's part of nature, it's really fun to. You talked about having different kinds of friends, some that might even surprise people who know you. Is this because you share different interests or different sides of your personality? Well, both, I suppose. So, uh, in the magic world, for example, I, uh, there's a convention uh, that was in The Hague. Uh, it's uh, kind of the Olympics of magic. Its acronym is FISM, which is the French for the Federation of International Societies of Magic. You can put that in French if you want to. It mm -hmm. sounds the s kind of the same. And uh, this past year, I've been to eight of them. They meet every three years. Uh, this past one was in The Hague, and they had 46 nations about uh, 2,500 people, and I think I knew maybe a quarter of the people that were there, simply, wow. which means I'm getting old and have been to too many of them, I guess, but oh, such fun. And I, one of the guys that I known from Italy, this was interesting, he was telling me about uh, uh, several men that we know from Italy, that this man in Rome had died, and this man in Bologna had died, and, you know, that were friends of ours, and he said, so now, the young magicians are coming and asking me for things, and I find out I've replaced them. What does he uh, mean? Well, I mean them. because now we are the ones that have taken, and me too, have moved to that mantle of, we are now the old guys. Right. All right, if you will. We're the, and we didn't really, it wasn't anything we planned, it just, that's where we are now. It's our turn in life, if you will. Are you enjoying that? What's your oh impression yeah, of that? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, oh, there's nothing more flattering than when somebody comes and honestly wants your advice. Oh, oh. hey. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Yes, it is fun. I was thinking about, I, I have friends and who say you should never give anybody advice because they need to find out their own lives and make their own mistakes. And I have other friends who say, oh no, you have the wisdom of a lifetime. Absolutely. You should share it if, sure. if, that's if desired. That's so. why you read the books and you look for the wisdom in all what of these things. What drew you to magic? What do, uh, drew a long years ago. Was it a childhood interest? Was yeah, it a I started when, uh, when I was eight years old. Because you're uh, quite mechanical with your hands, right? Photography, gardening, magic. Well, there's a, there's a statement about that that says people who have a sit-down job, which I did in all right. my years, should have a stand-up, get-your-hands-dirty hobby. That's really Okay, so I'm on my feet a lot in all of these things. I mean, there's no stretching exercise like trying to weed a garden. 
All right. right. That darn weed way over there. And exercise, I don't like. Weeding garden, I don't like either, but it needs to be done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. <laughs> we want to thank Jean for being with us today. We've learned quite a bit from Jean. Uh, Jean talked about the survivor mentality that no matter what happens to you, put your emotions aside by implication, identify what needs to be done, do it, but see it through totally. He talked about that life is quite different from school. In school, you do the work and take an exam. But in life, you take the exam, you have the experience, and then you learn the lesson. He talked about the need to do things well and to gravitate towards things that you can do well and perhaps have a variety of things. Just now he talked about if you have a sit-down job, you should have a stand-up or you should have a, a physical um, activity. And of course, he has netting, his gardening, his photography, and uh, his great magic career. But it's also kind of more than that, that you should gravitate towards uh, the best of your personality. If you're more of an extrovert, at least spend more of your time in that kind of environment. If you run across people that uh, are difficult, and we all do, try and avoid them. <laughs> but if you can't, see if you can practice or be that kind of person Gene describes himself as noble and without an agenda because that people will sense and that they will understand. And almost always, not maybe always, but most of the time anyway, you can work things out with them. So again, I want to say thank you, Gene. Thank Gene when you see him around town. And remember, kindness counts. Practice kindness day to day. Do something sweet. Thank you so much, and see you next time. Thank you, my dear. To share your comments and suggestions, contact Junior. The email address is juniordone at aol.com or write to Post Office Box 169, Midland, Michigan 48640.